Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation, and also welcome back to the Autoflux games. This is car number four of five. Yes, we are actually that close to getting into the challenges. I can hardly believe it myself, but let's run through the competition so far. First vehicle is the Snakebite, and forgive the lighting, the game has had a few updates and things are wonky <laughs> now that I've turned off ray tracing because the performance is really bad, but don't worry about it. Same thing with the shoestring, this one being a front-wheel drive beast, uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun, <laughs> just a little bit. Car number three was the Pugo, the French knockoff version of the Bugo, with a few missing features and also a few extras and a couple of things that are a little bit out of place. And today we're going to be making another car. This one is going to be interesting. I have some ideas and I'm not sure if it's actually going to work, but I figure, you know what, we may as well give a good startup to a strong sports car because we need some competition for that front wheel drive beast thing. As you may have seen in the stats, it's got a lot of power, over 2000, and I think I need something to fight it. And that's where this comes in. It's a Ferrari-esque body, uh, which is cool. Not something I would normally use, but I think it's going to be fun. Let's do partial aluminium, monocoque, and carbon fiber chassis. Ooh, things are getting heated here. I feel like this one is going to need it, though. So this car only has mid and rear options for the engine placement. I'm going to go mid longitudinal for now and we'll come up with uh, some more stuff later. I'm hoping that the engine that I want is going to fit in here. I probably should have tested it, but you know, <laughs> these videos are a little bit off the cuff. I'm doing push rods in the front and the back and I'm going to keep the quality up for now. We may turn that down. The game is going to complain, but that's kind of part of the fun. On to the engine. I want to see if we can get something huge. Uh, and having it be rear wheel drive, looks like V16 ain't going to do it. So through a series of unfortunate events, I have been able to fit a, 11, a nearly an 11 liter V8, 90 degree V8, in this car. Now, in order to do that, I had to make it transverse. So it's mid transverse, which is fun. Um, that's without testing any of this stuff here either. It seems to be the length that's the issue. So width and stuff with dual overhead cam isn't really the problem. But if you can see, I jump up to V10, we're too big. I go over to V12, we're way too big. It's just unfortunate. On to the insides. Let's give this thing the best chance that it can get. Billet steel flat plane crank, holy. Uh, lightweight Han rods and probably forged pistons. By the way, this is 1990. I don't know if I mentioned that already yet, but we're going back in time for this one. So far, quality's been all the way up because uh, quality is fun. Let's do uh, VVT on the intake and then crank that quality up there. Turbos, uh, single turbo actually. Let's make it fun with a pretty decently sized intercooler and... I don't know, we'll have to come back to this stuff. High quality though. I'm actually thinking about making it a carbureted setup just for fun. I know 90s carburetors, that doesn't really align, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're going leaded uh, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be 110 Ron. That's a lot of room to work with. This is gonna be good. Turbo race exhaust, heck <laughs> yes. Weird exhaust when you do it like this, by the way. It's got like a crossover pipe and stuff, but that's how it has to go for a V engine into a single turbo. And we'll make that exhaust a little bit bigger right out of the gate. No mufflers or anything, crank that up. And wow, it does not make a lot of power. The temperature of the turbine has exceeded safe limits. To be expected. There we go, okay, so it makes a thousand horsepower pretty easily, actually. Uh, that's surprisingly easily, in fact. Man, it looks like a pretty big beast, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> I've got some bad news for you because it's time to choke the absolute heck out of this engine. I want it to make no power. Yes, no power. Because the challenge here today is to make the biggest engine with the least amount of power that I can. 50 horsepower, Ooh, It's heavily choked at the moment. Piston stress and Conrad stress are a bit of an issue though, I gotta go back to that. That's kind of crazy, actually. It can barely take any RPM. I guess that's probably just because of the engine setup. Um, <laughs> it is just a square engine. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we needed that RPM anyways, because uh, we make the same power all throughout our 
flat line. <laughs> there is literally no curve. It's just straight up flat. <laughs> This is going to be a lot of fun, actually. This this is going to be an absolute disaster of a car, but that's kind of a good thing. So if you're wondering how I've achieved this ridiculous uh, choking is two ways. First of all, uh, we're currently using a 47 horsepower intercooler, which is causing some issues, as you may suspect. Uh, and also, um, the exhaust is down to 12.7 millimeters, which is like half an inch. Uh, so just picture lawnmower exhaust on this. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's uh, <laughs> tapering down just a little bit out of that turbo. Yeah, and the intercooler looks like it belongs on a go-kart. My goodness. <laughs> what a beast. This has got to be one of the worst engines I've ever made. And going into a car that is going to be as light as I can get it, because I want it to be able to actually drive. And that is going to be the big challenge today. Will it actually drive in BeamNG? Uh, the quality is there, but <laughs> I'm not sure if anything else will be. I'm very curious as to how this engine sounds. So for the first time in a while, let's check it out and see how it does. Keep in mind it's got no mufflers, so get ready for a deafening. Okay, so it seems to bounce off the limiter at 4000 RPM. I actually kind of just want to risk it a little bit and get some percentages on those. I know that... I mean, that's not ideal, but at this point, well, we'll try it and see what happens. Obviously, if that bricks the car, we can come back and fix it. But for now, let's make it good looking, because uh, that's kind of an important thing, is it not? Um, well, the weight is already down to negative 15 here. Let's go ahead and maybe pick the... I actually don't know what the difference is. Oh, that that's definitely the right one there. This... Yeah, no, that's not really it. Although you can see the giant power plant in there. So having low body quality means less weight, and because this car only has 50 horsepower and the engine does weigh quite a significant amount, I want to make sure it weighs very, very little. So in terms of colors, Ferrari Red is an easy choice, but I want to make this one something a little bit different, maybe like a turquoise? I'm not sure. Okay, so on to the fixtures. Now, obviously this is a Ferrari body, but that doesn't mean it has to look like a Ferrari. I can make it look however I want, and uh, I'm going to do just that. First things first, let's get out some rims, uh, sports car rims in particular. Man, I, I do want to try and make this look good. It, it is a bit of a challenge, though. Okay, so I kind of just went through and made the entire car uh, in the background, though, so you'll see that in a bit. But I just wanted to kind of get an idea of where we're going to end up in the stats and overall it doesn't look too bad obviously bmng is the real test but just putting some very basic wheels on it as an example and it does look okay it's gonna have some thin wheels that's for darn sure but again in the name of lightness uh it only weighs 824 kilos at the moment so yeah the lighter the better 50 horsepower is not going to be very much this is going to be more in line with the pugo that we made last week uh, but that's okay. It does have a massive, way overkill engine, and that's really what I'm here for. Okay, so obviously we're not going to skip past the fixtures. Let's get some headlights on here. Okay, it's a little bit glitched. Yeah, the game is strange at the po at this point. The latest update seems to have broken a bunch of stuff, but again, it's an open beta, so that's kind of what you would expect. Um, let's get into some of this stuff here, though. I'm just happy the game works overall. Oh no. <laughs> okay, you know what? Pop-ups. Let's do pop-ups. Pop-up headlights in this game kind of look garbagey, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to give it our best shot here, especially using... Actually, I can't use them in 3D because then they're going to look even more garbage. Wow, this is unfortunate. Would you look at that? They're down. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so we have our pop-up headlights, but they're permanently down. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this body needs pop-up headlights. I just don't know what else to put on here. So we're going to do that, and then we'll do a bar across the front with some other lights, because I think that's as good as it gets for here. Now, in terms of styling of this beast, I want to make it seem like it's fairly aggressive, but the reality is, as we know, that that 
isn't quite the case. <laughs> so I'm going to do one of my classic things. Uh, I've done this a lot with a lot of my older cars, but just using one of these uh, lips here, just kind of bringing it out and then we can morph it in. But we're going to go with a, I think, black plastic look, maybe. Yeah, just like a matte black plastic for our uh, aggressive accents. I think that's going to be fun. And I'm going to use these same pieces along the side of the car. We'll just mirror them as well. <laughs> but I won't use the same ones on the back, don't worry. Now that's what I call aggressive, although not really, but uh, it, we can pretend. So <laughs> what I'm going to do then is uh, just kind of bring this in, paint it black, and boom, we have something. I've actually used the same body before where I put headlights on the rear and I put taillights on the front and it was the reverse car, which was fun. Uh, you should definitely check out that video. It's ancient now, but it is a fun one. I don't remember how I styled it back then other than those things. Uh, so we're just going to kind of work with what we got here. <laughs> maybe put some... Actually, I think these maybe will be good. Weird, but good. You know, I don't hate this as much as I thought I might. So I'm going to keep it. Yeah, there we go. We got some headlights of uh, some description. They're strange, but they're... Uh, functional. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if they actually work. But at least you have something when the big lights are down. You know, Ferrari's logo is a prancing horse, uh, so I'm gonna put a unicorn thing on here. That's close enough. <laughs> yeah, that's automation close enough right there. And it's totally in the wrong spot. Let me fix that. There we go. And bigger too. Oh yes. Gotta show that thing off. So I've got some more exciting things coming up uh, that I think you need to stay for. <laughs> if you've made it this far in the video, be sure to check out the one next week for a little bit of a surprise. You know what doesn't make that much sense? Big cooling on a car that has a rear engine. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing it anyways, but <laughs> I just put these on here. I can never really make these work as well as I hope they would, but they're on there, so uh, yeah, they're gonna stay. On to the rest of the car. Now the interior on this is actually fairly simple because it's only got two seats, but I do want to stick something here so the engine is actually seen because it's already trying to be seen. It's sticking out of the car here. Okay, I've got a genuine question for you and this is something that I've just been thinking about. By the way, the car only has one exhaust pipe, so yeah, we're putting on uh, <laughs> two blowers here. But my question is, if a Ferrari only had 50 horsepower, would you still be interested in driving it? Like, does it lose its allure of being a Ferrari because it's got so little power? Like, when I think about other classics, uh, I, I think about maybe like some ancient Bentleys or something where they have no power at all, but they're driven still and they're worth a ton of money because they're classics. I feel like it would probably be the same thing with a Ferrari, but I don't know. Like, if it had no power, is there really any point in driving it? The allure for a lot of it is gone. I guess it depends entirely on what you're interested in, but uh, yeah. For me, I'm not sure. Alright, this is taking me a while to make, but I'm kind of happy with the back end. I decided to put a wing on it because it's fast. <laughs> not really, but we can pretend, uh, and I guess that's the entire point. Now what I want to do here might not be possible, but I think I saw something a while ago. It might have actually been an exhaust, but I want to find the cutout somewhere. Aha! There it is, the exhaust cutout. It's uh, not anywhere near big enough, but <laughs> I'm going to try to make it work. How big can we get it? Okay, I've got to admit, I'm surprised it actually goes this big, but <laughs> that is a deep cut. Wow. Um, interesting i wish it was rectangular that's all i'm gonna say oh never mind what is this we got cut stuff huh oh my goodness they integrated it into the game i didn't even know this existed <laughs> i should be paying more attention by the way i'm playing without mods at the moment and the reason will become clear next week uh but i just figured for now we may as well start cutting because this is where I have a lot of fun, um, just cutting things out. <laughs> I find too much enjoyment in this. But anyways, that's that. So a big part of the reason why I've cut this this way is because I want to do something that doesn't make a lot of sense, and that is put a huge intercooler back here. 
Uh, maybe we'll just make it the large one, yeah. And it just put a massive, massive intercooler, three-dimensionally, in the back end because, uh, of course, that's exactly where it would be uh, <laughs> in our randomly mid-engined uh, 50 horsepower beast. But yeah, that thing is needed to cool off the turbo, my goodness. That thing is putting out too much power. More like choking too much power, holy. We went from a thousand to nothing. All right, that is looking fairly aggressive. It might be time to cut the suspension and actually try this thing in BeamNG. First, I do wanna try something though, and that's Testarossa side panels because uh, it is supposed to look like a Ferrari after all. So the bigger these are, the better. Okay, they don't look very good, <laughs> but maybe I'll stick with it? Ugh, I don't know. Alright, time for a quick interior. I did a little bit of work on the top, by the way. I just made it so you can see the carburetors, and there's like another intercooler intake thing in there, but let's not worry about that too much. Now, I did see somebody ask me for a tutorial on how to make an interior, uh, so... I'm not the most qualified person to be giving you this kind of advice, but it's quite easy. Uh, especially this, which is a race car, you literally just go over to the interior tab here, interior 3D specifically. Uh, you have to be using the most recent version in the game, I believe, to get that. I just picked the most basic uh, one of these because that's what I'm using for my purpose. Flip it over to 3D, and then you can use these advanced settings. So. Uh, as an example, I'm going to move this like that. And you notice the blue axis here, so we'll just rotate it 90 degrees. And then, uh, yeah, everything else I just do manually. It's fairly easy, like, it doesn't take that much time once you've done a few of them. Uh, then you'll know exactly what you need to do. Like, there, that's it. <laughs> that's it for that. Now we just need sports seats, and I'm good. I mean, seats are a little bit more complicated, I guess, because they don't line up very well, but basically just that. Duplicate obviously 3D, and then uh, everything else will probably be done manually. You might want to color them when they're out of the car, just a small advice, I guess, but for me, I'm just making them all black, so it's pretty easy. And there we go, that's the car interior done, and that's the car itself done. I am very curious to see how well this thing works in BeamNG, so let's take it out for a bit of a spin and see if it does anything at all. And it's probably not gonna spin wheels, I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, first thing, probably we should run through the stuff that I've done here, and I'm going to have to change it. Uh, the gearing looks ridiculous, uh, because apparently <laughs> you just kind of stick with your horsepower all the way up to 100 and something, uh, I guess a little bit more than that, kilometers an hour. It's not much. I've gone for a 5-speed manual, and it looks like we're topping out around 164, which is reasonable. I decided to go with super short gears, because... Yeah, just look at that curve there, <laughs> and no wheel spin to be worried about, so no diff locks or anything like that. Obviously high quality is, is my first priority. And then the wheel size I need to adjust here because, yeah, something's not right. <laughs> oversteer, yeah, oversteer at 50 horsepower is not gonna really mean much. So the game is suggesting I go with 140s at the front, which is pencil thin, so... Uh, yeah, you want to see what those look like. Oh boy, <laughs> trailer tires on there. But again, it only has 50 horsepower and it's rear wheel drive, so I'm going to go with that just for the sake of lightness. And that actually gets rid of a decent amount of these worries here. I'm honestly not concerned about most of this. It's kind of just pointless uh, considering the car itself. Everything else, though, is pretty basic. Just tiny, tiny brakes because it's very light. No aerodynamic stuff at all. Super basic interior. I decided I wanted to make this one as light as possible, so ripped everything out. None of this stuff, literally nothing, except optimizing weight and uh, weight distribution a little bit more to the rear, although I don't think it makes a difference. And then suspension, everything is just quick race preset, and uh, lowest possible ride height is where it was sitting before. It looks pretty decent, though. Looks pretty good. So yeah, 815 kilos, 50 horsepower, and a... 10 basically 11 liter v8 let's see what this thing can do so this is the magic 302 as i'm calling it although honestly that doesn't have any particular meaning i'm just naming it that because it's fun <laughs> let's take it for a drive oh my goodness it's actually like kind of fast keep in mind this thing has 50 horsepower 50 
No way, it's not even slow. I was worried it was going to be deathly slow, but it, it's reasonably quick. Oh man, this is going to be a great challenge. Oh, I thought it was going to fight against the Pugo, but it might actually fight against the truck. Like, it's got no top speed because it has no RPM and the gearing tops out at like 160, but... Man, five gears. Okay, it's still in neutral. There we go. Five gears and a pretty reasonable acceleration. I'm quite pleased with this. Man, super, super thin front wheels, so you can't expect much in terms of handling. And again, its top speed is sorely lacking, but what it lo what it loses in that, it makes up for in a weird charm of being something that has an 11 liter V8, but also only has 50 horsepower. Like, can you imagine how fast this would be if its full power was unlocked and it had proper wheels? Well, you don't have to imagine because uh, some answers are going to be revealed next week, but I don't know. I just... Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. I'm, I'm very impressed. I am searching for that top speed right now. It looks like we're at 150 just about. <laughs> well, 151 now. I'm looking at the airspeed. I'm not looking at the other thing. Although, let's be real, this thing does not wheel spin at all. Actually, I'm kind of curious now. Oh, the brakes. Huh. Yeah, they're as small as possible, but uh, surprisingly good enough for something this light. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's go back into first, actually neutral, and it puts out a lot of black smoke out of that right exhaust pipe. Give it the beans, and it does do a little bit of a spin, but yeah, there ain't much there. It definitely needs these super short gears, although I think second might be a little bit misplaced there. Guys, I gotta be real with you, this Magic 302 is not even close to as bad as I thought it would be, and... I've impressed myself with my lack of skills, but uh, today, you know what? Luck is working out for us because this car has finally uh, come out as something decent. I feel that way about every car in the challenge so far. Everything, even though the concepts are purposefully flawed, almost all of them have a little bit of charm to them, and I think that is something that you will hopefully appreciate when we get to the challenges, because they too are flawed, but hopefully have a little bit of charm to them. So next week is going to be the last week for car building for now, and then we're going to do five weeks of challenges followed by a finale where I will just basically reveal the winners of these challenges based on points, and uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> I have not yet decided exactly what's going to happen at the very end, but I may do it all in that fifth week, or I guess tenth week. Or I might extend it out depending on how things go, because there are a few ongoing challenges that uh, kind of need some time. <laughs> They're not really up to me. Yeah, I've got some hints here that I'm trying to drop, but you'll find out next week. I'll give you all the details, and it's very important that you listen up, because it's going to be good. So without further ado, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have a bit of a lofty goal this year. I want to hit 50,000 subscribers. I've, it's been a goal of mine to hit 100,000 for a long time. And uh, at once it seemed very possible. But you know what? We got to be a little bit more humble now. So 50k is the goal. Let's see if we can get there this year. I think we can if the trajectory keeps up. But obviously I need your support. Uh, and be sure to like this video if you liked it, and stick around for more. If you missed any of the videos in this series, there's a playlist in the description, uh, and also in the pinned comment, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be that. <laughs> Let's crash into something at high speed. 100 kilometers an hour into this wall. I tend to hit this wall almost every single time I do this, but it's a good wall. <laughs> good for smushing things at 100k. And, wow, uh, if you're a passenger in this vehicle, be prepared to get hit in the face with an 11 liter V8, because, uh, yeah, that's what happens in the event of an accident. <laughs> this thing is so unsafe, I love it. Big thanks to everybody who's chosen to support this channel via the join button. Uh, these are the advanced supporters. They uh, generously donate $5 a month to this channel. Uh, and, yeah, my goodness, you guys are a significant portion of my YouTube income these days, and you keep this channel going. Uh, it's very much a hobby, like, it's never been enough to support me uh, full-time, but it, it does help a lot to have a little bit of kickback from you guys, um, and it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to justify a lot of the things 
uh, that I do for this channel, a lot of the time that I spend on it. But let's just get into the names here. We have Overlord, QT Bear, Terry, Williams, J. Pope, uh, Davis Heister, the German Dude, Sleep64, Synlab, Jared Grigg, Goofy Plays, Badger, and Phoenix Shark. Thank you everybody for your support. And I'll see you again in the next one, the final build for a while, but it's going to be good. <laughs> trust me. Okay, maybe don't, but try, try to trust me, please. <laughs> try to trust. <laughs>